How's it going, fellas? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be a replay analysis of a 1v1 match. This is plat 1, but the guy is actually champ 2 and 2s, so take it with a grain of salt. This isn't an actual plat 1, just for 1v1 purposes. He is a uh, plat, and this is Cory 3000 Now, he says he has difficulty understanding when to challenge, and he says uh, it costs him goals when he feels like he's too passive because he doesn't know when to challenge. So... We can fix that. Looks like you win here, though, so... Wasn't such a detrimental. You probably won here because you're probably playing with actual plat players or someone who's not champ one in twos. Like, just saying. If you're low enough in ones, they're probably going to be weaker opponents. But if you're champ in ones, they're going to be grand champ. Like, I can already tell this guy, your opponent is not champ. <laughs> so that's probably why you beat him so badly. Yeah, okay. Capitalize off his mistake, which is he gave the ball away too soon. He's just being a little too, um, too floppy. He's too scared. His kickoffs suck. Yeah. Good recovery. Looks like there's a long gap here from when a goal happened, and it looks like he scores. So we can actually see what's going on here. Yeah, that's fine. You're not going to get scored on anyways, so it's no big deal. Yeah, I think there is when you could have challenged. You can. You just gotta be boosting the whole way. You're not at full speed. But, um... You can definitely try to go after this. If you have more speed, then you're probably gonna catch up to, to the ball faster than he would. And look, he's not even boosting. So if you keep boosting and you see he's not boosting, then you're probably gonna win. But if he is boosting, then yeah, you can just fake challenge like you did here. But considering that this player is giving you signs that he's not really that good, you can probably take advantage of that and just go after it. You know, this is okay when to experiment, right? I wouldn't mind being a little aggressive here to see how he reacts, right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, you, you just dilly-dallied here. You definitely could have scored if you just kept boosting. Good use of the wall. Yeah, so far your decision making is, is fine. It seems like you don't play that much ones. So that's why you're plat in this. And it looks like you're trying to play more ones, which is good. Because let's face it, you don't want to be plat in ones. <laughs> Especially when you're champ. I mean, come on, that's too low. This shot could be better. Um, you just got to position more to the right. Even like... Like, right here, you should know, I'm going to position more to the right of the ball. I have time. This MA guy is not going to be in contact with the ball again. He's still falling. So, I can actually just take my time. He's got no boost, which you don't know. But, either way, he's still awkward. You can just go around here and then just hit the ball straight. Right? It gives you a more easier lineup. Okay, yeah. F okay, so... I didn't really think this was an issue. But, considering that you have no boost, throwing away the ball like this is a bad idea. Because now you can't catch up to it anymore. And then... Look, he's able to catch up to it and flick the ball over you. You still have no boost, you can't catch up to it. Yeah, it's just a boost management and also just throwing away the ball. There's nothing wrong with keeping the ball close every single time, right? Just do that. If you had more boost, which means that you could have more power onto the ball, then yeah, you can do that to, like, send it back to your side and go for, like, you know, just bring it to your corner and just reset. But since you have no boost, it, you can't 
You can't afford to have the ball away from your car. Especially in 1v1. Just keep the ball close as much as you can. You could 50 there a little better, but the, the play wasn't dangerous in general, so that's why the guy wasn't able to score. Yeah. Your opponent is just bad, let's face it. He's not good. He's an actual plat player. <laughs> Which is interesting, because I wonder what his rank is in twos. Because if he's an actual plat player in ones, because I can tell he's not that good. So I wonder what his real rank is. Even though ones rank doesn't mean it's a fake rank, but let's face it, nobody plays ones as much as we should. So ones is kind of not like your true rank. Maybe it could be because it just show, goes to show how terrible you are. <laughs> I'm not saying you in general. I'm just saying to all of us, um, we don't play ones a lot, so it exposes how bad we are. Like, I can barely consistently stay in GC1 and 1s, <laughs> and I'm a GC3 SSO player, so... Go to show that individually, I'm really not that great. I'm more of a team player than a soloist. Okay, you don't need to go for big boost here. You should try to go after this ball with the small pads, though. Right? You get the small pads, so you have some boost. Right? You can even try to hit it over here. You know? Just stick around. You don't have to leave so soon. Especially when you... Let's face it, man. I'm also saying this because he's bad. And I think you should know by now that this guy isn't really that great of a player. So, you don't have to stick around. Or you don't have to rotate back. Because, look, you didn't even go after the ball. You know? I don't really think you're paying attention to how your opponent plays. Okay. You get scored on again, so... Okay, this is bad. Why is this bad? Because you're dribbling the ball on top of your car on your side of the field, and you're relatively closer than that. You don't want to do this, because there's no surface on the opposite side of the ball, right? There's no wall here to prevent the ball from going backwards. Basically, your car is just non-existent. Your car is the new ground, right? The ball will be hit this way. You don't want to do that. Because look, you almost got scored on here. Honestly, if he was better, that would have been a goal. So don't do that, because it's going to kill you later. You're only getting away with it because he's terrible. Okay, so he gets scored on here, so let's see why. Alright, you have to go eventually. Instead of just waiting around. Yeah, see that? <laughs> That's exactly why you get scored on. You can go after this ball right here. The ball is bouncing back towards you. Right? Just go after it. Just be more confident. I think you can afford to go after this ball. And besides, you're up four points. You know, just turn around. Power slide. Keep power slide turning and boosting. You will get there in time. At least to 50. Right? You don't have to beat this guy necessarily. Just enough to stop the play. Right? Because look, now you're just giving him space to dribble on you. And that's exactly what happens here. You get yourself crossed up. Now, another way you can challenge is by slowly letting him come to you when you shadow defend, right? You keep going at the same speed as him, but you need to get to a point where you're, you're, you're getting closer and closer so that you can challenge the ball, right? You want to slowly close in the gap. How you do this? Well, you let him come to you. You don't want to move faster or at the same speed as him when you're shadow defending especially when the play is uh this slow like y you can afford to go after this play the ball right when you're in a situation like this the best case scenario to not get faked is to just play the ball and you have to do this quickly and if and you know confidently the more time you give him the more likely you're going to get scored on and that's exactly what happens because look by the time you challenge, look how freaking close you are to the net. 
You could have challenged all the way back over here somewhere, and you, and you didn't you didn't choose to do that. You know, so you gotta be more confident. And you also just jumped too high here. This could have been blocked, but uh, you jumped too high. You could fake him with a jump, but you gotta lightly tap the jump button. It's doable. And when you do, 50 the ball with the side of your car, so your car is facing this way, and the ball is squeezed this way. Because look, if you... Let's use my little thing here. Let's say this is your car, right? You're facing like this, right? If you 50 this way, the ball is going to pinch this way, right? Because he has the momentum going in this way. And you're a surface or a, a force this way, right? And since you're side flipping, you're going to go straight. So... This ball is going to pinch this way. Because look. There's no, there's really no room for the ball to squeeze over this way. Right? Because this is where your car is. So naturally the ball is going to go out to where the red line is. Or the pink line is. So. Um, try to focus on those type of uh, 50s. I use them a lot in my games. And they help a ton. Trust me. They will help a lot. They help a lot in my rank. So guaranteed they're going to help in your lower ranks and it's going to be even more effective in the lower ranks because people in the lower ranks absolutely do not know how to 50. You know, in my rank it sometimes works because um, for the most part people know how to 50 better. But um, in the case of your rank, even you can even take this into your twos games. Just 50 with the side or, the side or the roof of your car. If you watch my newest short, um, you'll see why. I tell people to use the side of the car or to 50 with the roof of your car because it gets you more surface area, right? You're more of an obstacle, right? You, you want to be as big as possible when you're trying to block the ball. That's the point. So if you watch my newest short, uh, you'll understand why. <laughs> it's a really good short. I recommend you watch it. It's actually blowing up right now. It's got like, what, 5,000 views of, at this time. So... It's actually doing really well. Most of my other shorts haven't really been doing that recently. It's my second most viewed short of all time. Oh, this is a good try. Definitely could have scored there. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, you, the reason why you failed was because the way you turned, or the way you, you, you spun, that. You see how your car is dipping downwards in this direction? Now you're forcing your car to go this way. And this is why you don't get the touch that you want. Say, look, now you're on the left side of the ball. And, look, and you're still going to go on the left side. And if you're on the left side of the ball, you hit the ball to the right. So, <laughs> so don't air roll so much. Trust me, you don't need to air roll immediately. Just pop the ball up. Alright, this is the end of the replay anyways. So literally, just pop the ball up like this. Right? Just pop it. You don't even need to turn. Just... Just... Uh, focus on, you know, the the overall direction of the car. You see how much easier this is? And then I can, you know, air roll whatever I want at the end, but uh, you don't always need to air roll. See? I guess I'll do a cool shot. I barely even spun. I can even do the whole shot without spinning. Right? <laughs> it goes to show that spinning is actually not that important but the reason why we rotate like this is because it's flashier but it also helps us with um correcting any weird movements like even here see i keep spinning too much but it's not not, not that necessary realistically i do it because it's a habit and it feels nice but look i can still do the same plays without even spinning so realistically make it easier on yourself especially when you're a lower rank Right? It's okay to be a little humble. Right? If you're not comfortable with doing these type of air roll shots, right? Then don't go for it yet. Just do something simple like this. And guess what? If you just time yourself, right? You don't really have to turn your car anywhere. You'll just line up with the ball anyways. So, just focus on that. Alright, so that is the end of this replay. Hopefully you learned something from this, especially with the challenges and the, um, you know, 
the challenges and also just how you 50. Uh, there are definitely moments where you could have um, challenged a little sooner, especially on those plays where uh, you're giving him too much space when he's shadow, or when you're shadow defending. So make sure that you find a way to get to the play as quickly as possible because the more time you give him, usually the worse off it is. And it's usually a trial and everything. Um, so just focus on those and those those things and you'll be okay. Alright, so thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.